Hello, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the fast Fourier transform and the discrete short Fourier transform in MATLAB. And we're going to be working through a example of extracting frequency information from a time series data. So here's our SysML diagram that we're starting with um, just to walk through what we're going to be talking about. So we're at the intro right now. We're going to talk about what the Fourier transform is, and then we're going to jump into a MATLAB example using this time series data.mat struct that I've got ready for us. So go ahead and minimize this so we can focus. So let's just take a break from the visual and just talk for a bit. So the thing to remember when it comes to processing time domain signals is that a lot of the information is not there instantaneously, especially when you're talking about periodic behavior and oscillating systems you have to look at the big picture to be able to see where those frequency samples are, where those frequency artifacts are. And that's really all the fast Fourier and discrete Fourier transform do. They decompose a signal down to its coefficients, um, down to a set of evenly spaced sinusoidal coefficients uh, that can be used to recover the original signal. Exactly no. Analytically the Fourier transform can reproduce a signal exactly, but realistically uh, you get back you know most of what you've put in. So there's a couple numbers to keep in mind here. Uh, you know we got to think about this in terms of kilohertz frequencies. Um, electrical oscillations because we're talking about electrical engineering and signal processing. So, you know, in our case, what we think about is the frequency uh, sampling, sampling frequency. Uh, sampling frequency F sub S is going to determine our frequency resolution. So, if our sampling frequency is 25 kilohertz, we're going to get a uh, double-sided spectrum that's 25 kilohertz wide but it's going to be symmetrical about the origin uh, so we really don't no sorry it's not symmetrical about the origin it's it's about the origin but it's not necessarily symmetrical um, so you know we need to think about all right based on our frequency, sampling frequency, which in this example is going to be 25 kilohertz. No, 25 hertz. We're going to be able to determine that we've got, uh, we're going to be able to successfully discriminate up to 12 hertz of, of frequency information. Uh, so with that background, we're going to jump right in. So here's our setup. I'm going to walk through the code here. Our goal is this spectrum plot showing the relative dB and the raw magnitude. So first we load in our figure, load in our time series data and it's important that that be kept in your working folder and that that folder be added to the path or MATLAB won't find it. We extract the time vector and the signal vector as well as the sampling frequency in Hertz and then we do a little bit of constant definition so our sample period is 1 over the sample frequency and that's how often the sample is taken. Now we're going to extract the size of the samples 
and then we're going to determine that the number of samples is uh, the second the second value in that struct. So now we're going to plot the raw data so that we can see, all right, this is the time signal, this is the input data. Um, and then we're going to move on to the MATLAB y equals FFT operation here. So it's not done when you get it. It gives you a raw, it gives you a complex transformation. Um, and we don't really need that. We need just the magnitude and we only need half of the spectrum that it's giving us. It would give us a dual sided spectrum. So we cut the spectrum in half in step 2b. In step 2c, uh, we, oh, sorry, in step 2a, we find the absolute normalized value of the whole Fourier transform. Uh, in step 2c, we extract the latter half of the samples, and then we multiply them by 2 because half of the amplitude is on the other side. In this case, half of the amplitude is <coughs> on the other side of the origin. Uh, now we need to do a little bit of work to define our frequency. So, you know, we're saying we have a sampling frequency is a number of samples times two. Let me think about that for a second. Sampling frequency. Now the frequency domain is the sampling frequency, which is 25. Spread across Yeah, I'm losing it. I don't I don't know what that equation is saying, but we use that to get our frequency domain set up. Um, then we're plotting single-sided spectrum. And of course, you know, because this is engineering, we have to use decibels. Um, so we're looking at normalizing our entire spectrum with respect to the maximum value. And the maximum value is the highest point on the raw magnitude plot, which is uh, 1.5. Now we just use the text command to add a little bit of detail to our plot uh, for the reader. And we're done. Uh, and that's that's really as simple as it is to do an FFT in MATLAB. Um, you know, the, the next step with this might be to take this the spectral data and feed it directly into a neural network uh, to do some classification if, if you believe that there's some information that's there on a certain song that you want to get or a certain you know audio phenomena or electromagnetic phenomenon you can get that information and start feeding that into other signal processing algorithms the next video is going to focus on uh, doing this exact thing in python and the reason for that is that python is going to be the doorstep to uh, <coughs> more advanced signal processing tool chains pipelines uh, MATLAB is really good for understanding the concepts because they have a lot of stuff that's taken care of for you. Like the FFT, that FFT is done in the background. We don't have to worry about computing coefficients ourselves. They just kind of come out of the equation, come out of the function. There's advantages to that, especially if you're just doing some data interpretation you just want to see what your data looks like you just want to be able to play around with the data and manipulate it without much difficulty or effort matlab is the tool for that but if you're talking about further development matlab is going to restrict you in a couple of ways the main is that everything costs money for the extra plugins like the machine learning neural network plugin I mean, get your wallet out because it's at least 500 bucks per year, you know, for a personal license. So kind of ridiculous in my opinion, um, which is why Python is really the way to go if you're going to be doing more complicated stuff. And that's what we're going to jump into next. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe.